Good morning, my friends. Happy Wednesday to you. I love Wednesday because Wednesday, I'm able to be with you at 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock. So please come tonight, bring your family, bring your friends. You don't want to bring people with you. You don't want to allow it to be not just a time for you to learn the word of God, but for you to time to evangelize other people. And Wednesday is a great time. So we encourage that you would be with us tomorrow. All right, we are in Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. In, <coughs> in Acts chapter 6, we see um, there was these um, Hellenist Jews. They didn't speak Hebrew. They speak spoke uh, Greek, and they were being um, neglected. The apostles noticed this is wrong, and they appoint men. Well, one of the men they appointed was Stephen. And Stephen is just filled, the Bible says, filled with the Holy Spirit. And he starts to uh, minister to people. Well, as he starts to minister to people, uh, um, the, the, um, some people are getting upset. The religious people start to get upset. Well, he stops and he starts to preach the gospel. I encourage you to read this whole seven chapters. It's kind of a long chapter, so we're going to have to skip over it. But read it today. <laughs> and you'll read, he just starts preaching to them. And I want you to see what happens. And um, and it's just very powerful. Skip on over to chapter 7. Start with verse 44. And this is, again, Stephen preaching to these people who are resisting the things of God. And he says, Our father had the tabernacle of witnesses in the wilderness as he appointed, instructed Moses to make it according to the pattern which he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land of promise by the Gentiles, whom God drove out because of the um, uh, out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, and found favor before God, and asked to find a dwelling for the uh, for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet said. Now he's going to quote the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all things. He's saying, man, you going to make me a house? Are you kidding me? These hands made everything. You can't make me a house. Verse 55. <coughs> I'm sorry, verse 51. Look what he says. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You're uncircumcised in your heart. Now, they made a big deal of being circumcised in your flesh. And so they would be very adamant the eighth day these people would be circumcised. If they had a boy, these Jewish boys would be circumcised all the time. But he's saying there not needs to be just a cutting of your flesh. There needs to be a cutting of your heart. You need to be tender for the things of God. You st Again, verse 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Heart and ears. What's heart and ears mean? Ears mean, can you be corrected? Can you hear something that is tough? Can somebody tell you the truth, even if it's hard to hear? And do you have the humility to correct? No, your heart in your heart and your heart in your ears. You won't be corrected. You can't be corrected. You're always right. Okay, and that's what he says to them. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so you do, which the prophets uh, the prophets did your fathers not persecute. Which one did they? They persecuted them all. Man, he's just getting in their face, but I believe led by the Holy Spirit. You know, Sunday I preached a per very poignant message. Here's the thing I want you to know. Was it was it was it because I was angry? Was it because I was bitter? Was it because I was upset? None of those things. Sometimes it's the Holy Spirit that quickens you to confront people. Hallelujah. He says, and, and I believe that's exactly what's happening here. He says, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one. Who's that? Jesus. You killed them. Hallelujah. Uh, of whom you now have become 
and betrayers and murderers. You have received the law uh, by the direction of angels and not kept it. Man, angels told you what to do and you wouldn't even listen to them. Um, then they heard these things. Watch this. They were cut to the heart. Now, I've taught this to you before, but let me teach it again. When the word goes forth, many times it'll cut your heart. It's, the Bible says two-edged sword, able to pierce through the bone and the mire, and it's able to, to judge the intent of the heart. You think you were doing something, and you think your motive was good, but the Holy Spirit comes and shows your motive wasn't good. It was evil, and it cuts your heart. When you get cut to the heart, you have an opportunity to respond. And you're either going to respond the way many people did in the book of Acts when Peter stood up. We just read this a couple of days ago. Peter stands up and he starts preaching the gospel and he's cutting their heart. Well, their hearts were cut and they interrupted and said, Peter, what must we do to be saved? Man, we want to repent. Watch, here they're cut to the heart. But many times people that are cut to heart, they don't respond properly they respond improperly. They don't respond by the spirit. They respond by the flesh. Verse uh, 54 again. Then they heard these things. They were cut to the heart and they gnashed, they gnashed at him with their teeth. Oh! <laughs> it's kind of funny, huh? But it's not funny. They're so angry. Look, verse 55. But he being filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, 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 late yesterday, the Apostle Paul or the Apostle said, we don't, we don't need to just people to serve. We need to be pick people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. So, uh, Stephen is filled with the Holy Spirit as he's serving people. And now he's filled with the Holy Spirit as he's preaching to these people. Look what it says. But being filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. He looks up and he sees, what's the glory? The manifestation of the riches of God. He sees it. This is a supernatural thing that's happened. And he sees the glory of God. Oh my God. He's on earth, but he looks up and he sees heaven. And he sees the glory of God. Oh my goodness and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He looks up and he sees heaven. He sees the glory of God and he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus at the right hand of God standing there. Oh my goodness. Watch this. And said, look, I see the heavens opening and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Over and over again in the Apostles, Jesus is called the Son of God, but he's also called the Son of Man. And he says, man, I see Jesus. He's right there. Watch this. I see him standing at the right hand of God. And then they cried out with a loud voice, um, with, with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. Now they are so mad at him, they're just, they're lunging at him. They're running with one accord. All of them are just lunging at him, running at him. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness, watch this, and the witnesses laid down their clothes, clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Later on in the Bible, we read how this affected Saul greatly. They said, hey, Saul, they found this, this guy. They said, Saul, will, will, you, will you watch our coats? Because we're going to stone this guy and we need to, we need to take our coats off to do it. Oh, my goodness. And they stoned Stephen uh, as he was calling on the Lord and saying, they're stoning him, watch this. And as they're stoning him, watch what he's saying. Lord, do not charge this with, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Oh my goodness. Let me stop here. And let me, let me just teach you one thing. Let me just teach you one thing here. Evil people act evil. Evil people act evil. Un unrighteous people act unrighteously. 
unforgiving people, un, un, people who, who won't receive, they sometimes are so nasty, so evil, so bitter, so angry. And they get so angry in this case. And all Stephen did was tell them the truth. They got so angry that they lunge at him. They, in one accord, are running at him. They're taking off their jackets, and they're going to stone him. And as he is being stoned to death, his main concern isn't, stop, this is hurting me. I didn't do anything wrong. He's not defending himself. His main thought is, God, don't hold this sin against them. Oh, my goodness. In a time, how are they going to know us? They're going to know us by our love. In a time of evil that is rampant in our, in our world, can we not be have contempt for the lost? Can we, can we turn in our contempt and can we turn that into compassion? Can we turn in our bitterness for people who are coming against Jesus Christ? And can we turn that in for love, for compassion? Can we become tender to people who hate us? I believe it's going to be really, really important in these last days to come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ where you have the mind of Christ. When you do not, um, you do not, when other people treat you viciously, you treat them graciously. When other people treat you with contempt, you treat them with compassion. When other people treat you with bitterness, you treat them with love. And let me tell you what, all kinds of people, all kinds of people will see what's happening and they will fall in love with Jesus. Because when you and I do that, we not only talk to them about, about the reality of Jesus, but we show them the reality of Jesus. Let me pray with you right now. Father, I pray for those who are listening today. I pray for this Wednesday. May tonight be outstanding. May you add people to us like you're added to the apostles. Father, may you grow this church and not just grow us numerically, but Father, I pray that we be growing spiritually. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, what a pleasure it has been to be with you this Wednesday. We'll see you tonight. And then, of course, we'll see you tomorrow on Happy Thursday, which is a great Thursday to be with us. Hallelujah. And we'll see you. You know what? So we'll see you tonight and we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you this weekend. I'm going to continue to preach on preparing for the second coming of Christ. It's an exciting, exciting, exciting series. And invite somebody, invite somebody, invite somebody, invite somebody. So important. Hallelujah. And then, of course, don't forget Friday. What, what are we doing Friday? Friday, we're going to hang out. Friday, we're going to eat nachos, hot dogs, and watch a movie together. We're just going to chill out. We're just going to chillax. <laughs> we're just going to chillax, be together, have some good food, fellowship together. It's going to be a great time. So we encourage you to be together, you know what, with us this Friday night. Um, food starts at 6, and then the movie's going to start at 7. Parents, if you're bringing your kids, do me a huge favor. Do me a huge favor. Bring everybody with you. You know what? But keep an eye on your kids because there's not any child care provided on this Friday. We're just going to hang out as a family together. So let's be together. It's going to be a blessing. Remember at Hope, people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And of course, Jesus Christ is our Lord. We love you and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.